the latest from batshit bonkers Britain. Katie Hopkins on today's News Talk Radio TNT. And a very warm welcome to the Katie Hopkins Show on Monday, the 1st of January 2024 here at TNT Radio. I can't even believe it's the start of the new year and I get to do the show at the top of the day here in the UK. Coming up in the show today, I want to make a list of all the things we learned in 2023. So that's a chat challenge out to the tribe joining us on chat do join them what did we learn last year good people then another migrant accommodation in ireland is burned down authorities now say it was destined for the homeless irish people is that code speak i wonder and more holiday times chaos in the uk this time it's the euro start why can't we ever just leave this island why does it have to be so hard. You know what to do, good people. I may be in the driving seat, but you are the engine for this show. Do join us on the chat. Here is how you join the conversation. Katie Hopkins wants you to chat to her. Just go to tntradio.live, hit chat, and join your family chatting away. We're on the highway to freedom, where listeners drive the show. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Yes, we certainly are, my loves, and lots of you piling on into the chat already. Boridar, Katie, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, uh, tribers. People are uh, piling in to say Happy New Year. And also, I just wanted to share with you this card. Uh, Katie, lovely Mark and family, I love listening to your TNT radio show every day. It brings me lots of joy and makes me laugh out loud and some other messages to the dogs and the rest of my fam. So, but that's the point of this show. This show uh, in 2024 is about bringing joy and positivity. And we recognise, although I did say, get ready for this, I did have a plan, right? the start of a brand new year, I did think for about three minutes, new year, new me, right? Gone, gone are the old ways, the haphazardness, the brain going off on one, the clear issue of attention deficit that I have, the lame jokes and the sidebar of swearing, and in comes a new era of uber professionalism, a dry droning voice telling you things you already know or heard twice already from the boys, on YouTube gone is the ability to find nonsense in the seriousness and income sensible, right? A new era of sensible Katie Hopkins show, full briefs, tucked in vests and bras that could house an African continent. And then I thought, well, actually balls to that. Let's keep doing what we used to do <laughs> and find positivity in a world that feasts on gloom. So that will continue to be, having done that little thought process, what we're doing here at the Katie Hopkins Show on TNT in 2024 is finding the positivity in a world that kind of self-indulges on gloom and sells gloom in every direction and every which way. So on Tribe Today, good people, your challenge, and if you see me holding up my phone, it's because uh, that's where I follow the conversation that you guys are having. You guys generally, genuinely do drive this show. So what happens on Tribe, on the chat, is what drives the conversation. If you'd like to be part of that, do go to tntradio.live and tippy type onto chat. And you can chat away and help drive the conversation for this show, which is your show, which is about positivity and uplift. I say that a few times just to remind us. Um, so things we learned in 2023, right? That's the challenge today. Anything you think you learned in 2023, that can be personal or otherwise. I learned my wife was cheating on me with the guy next door. I mean, it could be that, or it could be more, you know, strategically significant than that, whatever. Um, I stayed up last night, would you believe, to see in the new year, quite proud of myself for doing that, not just going to bed like people do, uh, to see in the new year. And I stayed up to watch the fireworks uh, out of London. I wasn't there in person. I have been there in person and I dragged all the children along and they were all tiny. And so they were all sleeping on the big coat pile we had manifested on the pavement. And then because of the inclement weather conditions, 
a smoky kind of haze formed and we didn't see a single firework. <laughs> but it was the year when you weren't supposed to be going out because there were terrorist attacks and I was determined we were going out and so we did. Anyway, last night I watched them on screen and I will say without fear or favour, they were splendid. They were a splendid fireworks. The things that went up, the bright sparkly things were splendid. And I want to say to whoever the technical team are that manifest that, that curate that, that make that happen. I think it was terrific. There was one point it actually appeal, appeared like we'd burnt down the London Eye, which was actually a high point for me as well, because I think that thing is a festering sore on the face of humanity. But never mind, the fireworks were brilliant. And so well done to that technical team. However, like I said, we don't want to be doom and gloom here, but there is something that does need saying. The fireworks started off in London, and I'm hoping that no one else or not many people caught this. Not Certainly, if you were catching it on TV, I hope that you missed it. But it was the London Mayor presents New Year's Eve fireworks, whatever, whatever. And that was done by in drones. So that little narcissistic nipple height Muslim alleged mayor of a failing city, actually, but the fireworks were great. Used a moment of national unity, arguably, right? All eyes on, all eyes on, the eyes of the world, checking in to see what London's fireworks look like. Were they as good as Sydney's? I don't know, you can tell me. All eyes on, I heard the weather was dreadful, is that right, in Sydney? Anyway, all eyes on, and he sa- he uses that moment to say the London mayor presents. I mean, please, right? That man doesn't present anything. He doesn't present ideas. He doesn't present hope. He certainly doesn't represent Britain. The only thing that little tiny figure of hate represents well I mean he used to represent jihadis you know when he was a lawyer and who knows what that really means about what he actually does now because one would argue wouldn't one that he is still doing exactly the same as he always used to do regardless he then used that moment to say the 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 London mayor's office or no the London mayor the mayor of London himself presents New Year's Eve fireworks 2024 and of course in real terms it's not even him It's the British taxpayer, people who pay their taxes, you who present the fireworks. The British taxpayer presents the fireworks to the nation and internationally. And I would personally argue that those who have contributed the longest have a tax record. Doesn't matter if it's in the lowest band or what. Those who have contributed the longest should get the best seats. Those who've contributed their taxes all their lives should be at the front of the line, the front of the whatever. They should be in the seated wherever people go to watch this, in the fancy seats. Any taxpayer who's contributed the longest gets the front seats. If you haven't paid any taxes, you can sod off. Watch it at home like I did. I have paid the odd tax in my life. But it's a gift of the British people to the British people and internationally, if you want to see it that way. It certainly isn't the London Mayor. And finally, the people who pay for the fireworks, which is the British taxpayer, could do without the lefty narrative that accompanies the fireworks. How about we have some fireworks that just explode on the beats of the music, like the good old days? I'm not saying that I want to be the musical nor the creative director because I don't think anybody needs me sat around a meeting room table going na 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 I think things have evolved a bit since then. But could we not pick some great British music, Rolling Stones, for example? Madness, even better. And have the fireworks go off to music and just be epic. Oh, no, no, no. Because the London mayor presents using our cash, we have to have Afro, Afro beats, don't we? Going on to music, you know, in the background of our fireworks, we have to have Afro beats. And then we have to have a section talking about Windrush generation and God love them. 
But, you know, that has to be inserted, doesn't it? Like a, you know, hold it apart and insert it like a punch in the face to ordinary Brits who know that they won't get a mention. There won't be any East End lads getting a mention anytime soon, will there? And then we have to have the bit about the NHS. Ooh, notice that we didn't have Captain Tom this year. Did you notice that? After it was found out that his daughter was actually tasering him around the garden in order to make enough money to buy herself a spa complex, which we politely moved on from the whole Captain Tom featuring as part of the stir the fireworks. <laughs> Oh, my God, it's laughable. But still, we have to kind of uh, wedge the NHS in there, despite the fact that it's failing faster than a dying man who's gasping for breath with his head shoved in a plastic bag. <laughs> Let's pretend it's fine. And then we have to have the London, a diverse city that uh, where you are free to love who you want to love. <laughs> Whereas that little Muslim mayor of London knows exactly what his people think about being free to love who you want to love. You know, the same Muslims that I joined outside of schools protesting about LGBTQ being forced down the necks of primary school children. Uh, they do not actually believe you should be free to love who you want to love. And as they are now the majority in the UK, God only knows we better just start building bungalows, huh? If LGBT think they're going to make it into 2030, they're having a laugh. Any the who, that's what went on with the fireworks. And I'm just kind of, my rant is basically, wouldn't it be lovely if the fireworks could just be fireworks set to great British music? Maybe we could have the odd ordinary Brit feature doing quiet, voluntary work without any hope of any recognition. Maybe we could just be proud. Maybe we could have the black cabs and the red buses and things that made us British when we were great. You know, maybe some elements of the empire. Sure. We could have thrones of all our old colonies and the time of the Raj. <laughs> We could have, this is probably not going to go well at TNT. We could have images of boats headed off to Australia with the people that we thought were too naughty. What about that? Fireworks. Go back to a time when Britain was truly great. And have images of barbarism and cruelty that we inflicted all over the world. Have the Elgin marbles. In drones. Why has that took of me so much? I don't know. But on a separate note, um, if you saw the fireworks and you loved them, good for you. And I did think they were spectacular. I thought London looked great. And there was that moment where we did think we'd actually set fire to the London Eye, which was terrific. <laughs> We've got all sorts to talk about in the show. I've got my top three out of the UK, uh, including Ring's End. Is that how I is that how I say it? Ring's End in Ireland. We're talking about that. We're talking about uh, what went on last night in France and Germany, or at least what we need to, what we're allowed to know about. Um, we're going to be talking about why it's so damn hard to leave the UK after what went on with the Eurostar. Oh my life. Eurostar completely failed, as we know. And I want to talk about um, your list of things we learned in 2023. So get your brains in gear for that. Um, just before we go to commercial break, I want to play one thing. This was me having a minor rant about New Year's resolutions. And I thought it might be helpful for you as you go out and about today and people start asking you, oh, have you got any resolutions? Um, so this is sort of, uh, this clip is top tips from me about how to handle someone saying to you oh have you got any new year's resolutions <laughs> okay let's take a listen to this don't be alarmed i haven't broken down the lions just saw a rabbit so they've had to run for it a couple of things on new year's eve number one someone asks you what your resolutions are have something brilliant up your sleeve so if it's one of those po-faced yoga mums, hey, what's your New Year's resolution? Mine's to do 85 hours of aerobics each day. You can say, oh, 
and planning to have an affair and take hard drugs just to shut her up. Second thing about New Year is don't feel forced to do anything you don't want to do. It's supposed to be fun. And when was the last time that you planned what was fun? Fun just happens. It's a thing. It's a magic. I don't think you can really plan it. And finally, lots of people like to stop things as their New Year's resolution, don't they? I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to do dry January. Oh, don't we know about it? Yeah, because you've told us every two minutes how great you're doing on dry January. Maybe you're going to go vegan as well. Maybe start doing something. Start doing something fun the bun for yourself. Start deciding what you're going to feel and make it happy or grateful or elated or excited. And stop letting other people determine what you feel, particularly if it's shame or guilt or fear or any other of those unnecessary feelings that others make you feel but you shouldn't allow them to. Anyway, whatever you do, have fun, have a bloody great time and go for it in 2024. And remember, our New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I'm going to have an affair and take hard drugs. Stick that up your <laughs> you po-faced old cow. Go on, then. Go. <laughs> so that's me. So the dogs, the lions, we were coming back for a walk. They saw rabbits, so we had to stop for them. <laughs> and then I was inspired <laughs> to have a mass rant about New Year's. But just essentially, you know, resolutions. Uh, let's see. Anybody on Tribe doing Dry January? <laughs> if you know Dry January, Dry January. So literally, people just giving up alcohol for the whole of January and. Clearly, I'm always supportive of recovering alcoholics, as we know. But the people that do dry January, the thing that really bugs me about them is they feel obliged to tell everybody. Or like if you go out and you go, drink, anybody drink? And they go, no, no, I'm doing dry January. No, no, I'm doing. All right. Order a Coke. You know what I mean? Just say, oh, yeah, lime and soda, please. Just don't give me this. Oh, no, I'm doing dry January, you drunken old hag. You know, yeah, we don't need the detail. You know what I mean? It's like the guys that did Movember and then found themselves hilarious. Oh, yeah, I'm doing Movember. Yes, I can tell because you've got the least masculine moustache I ever saw pathetically not growing under your nose. And you think it's hilarious. And you want me to pay you £2.50 as sponsorship because you decided to not shave. Oh, how about that? You know, I'm doing leg hair January. Do you want to sponsor me? You know, I'm not actually going to give it to a charity. I'll just put it in my pocket and use it for something interesting or entertaining like chocolate. You know, oh, you decided not to shave. Oh, well done, you. Yeah, that's a real sacrifice right there. Try being a woman. You know what I mean? Whoever came up with Movember has no idea about the female struggle. That's what I'll say. <laughs> when I say that's what I'll say, it's as if I'm suggesting I don't have things to say on a regular basis, which I think might be a lie. Um, Dunnings, is anybody doing dry January? Is anyone going to fess up to it? Or is anyone doing that thing where people say, oh, I'm going to do veganuary, isn't it? God. I'm going to have to put up with those little assholes as well, aren't I, for January? Oh, I'm doing veganuary. Oh, no, I'm doing dry January and veganuary. Dry January, veganuary, and no sex February. By the time I get to March... I'll own cats and be lonely. Brilliant. Let's go to a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about my top three out of the UK. Look, I'm going to sensible mode because I'm trying to channel my inner sensible, even though the outrage in me is dying to get out. So we're going to talk about my top three out of the UK, including what went down in France and Germany and what just happened with a fire in a new property that was going to illegals that are now called homeless Irish people in Ring's End. So, my darlings, go nowhere or I will hunt you down and break your legs. My name is Katie Hopkins and this is TNT Radio. Katie Hopkins on today's News Talk. TNT Radio. <laughs> yes, here I am, my darlings, on today's News Talk, which if you know this show by now, you know that it's not necessarily t today's News Talk. We could just call it Katie's Beef, although that has other connotations that none of us want to go down, particularly not if we're in the UK at this time of the morning, just chatted to studio. So the maniac that runs studio while I'm doing this show, because you'll know we're a team here, that for me to get to you takes at least 18 men sweating profusely from the testicles to try and wield this 
menopausal weapon into your ears or faces. So one of those mighty men sweating in studio to try and bring this to air has just fessed up that he's giving up all sorts of things. So I was just saying, if you just joined the show, welcome, welcome, welcome to 2024. Welcome to January the 1st. Welcome to a brand new year and a brand new you. And it's not a brand new me. We already decided you're getting the same old me that you always got, but just a bit more deteriorated and a bit more bitter. <laughs> Gravity continues to win the war that's ravaging my poor frame. <laughs> but in studio, so wait a minute, we're giving up. No, they're giving up, not me. So just to be clear, I'm not giving up anything. My advice for New Year's resolutions is to start something. Doesn't matter if it's an affair, doesn't matter if it's hard drugs, doesn't matter if it's running naked down the high street at 2 a.m. You know, it doesn't matter to me what that is. It could be dogging. I don't, it doesn't even matter to me. Start something. So uh, don't stop anything. Contrary to my expert wisdom, a uh, studio is giving up sugar and coffee and being a lazy bastard. Now, my question would be, why would you stop all those three things in combo, right? This is the problem with New Year's resolutions. People get all carried away and they go, right, I'm going to cut out everything that is my last bit of salvation in life, isn't it? Life is tough enough. And so instead of just saying, right, OK, I'll walk a bit more. OK, all right, I concede. I'm a fat knacker. I will walk a bit more. Instead of just doing that, then they go, right, no coffee, no sugar. I mean, why not just get a blooming cat of nine tails and, you know, self-flagellate? In fact, they'd probably enjoy that, wouldn't they? The boys in studio, a bit of erotica on their way to work. But, you know, why not self-flagellate as you go? You know, why beat yourself in the face while you're also trying to exist in this very challenging time, economically, politically, and socially that we live in. Why do that to yourself? It makes no sense to me at all. What am I now? 48, nine? How old am I? 48. You know, 40 was, well, 30 for the long time was my expiry date. That shifted to 40 once I got my brain half cut out, you know, and now I'm 48. It's getting ridiculous. Like how many more New Year's do I need to see? <sighs> So now I've put the line at 50 because I like to have an end point. Do you know what I mean? So if you see your life a bit more like that, bring in the ending and it makes you realise that you need to do more of everything, more sugar, you know, more coffee, more naughtiness, because time is short and precious in the sense of precious that we have fun. OK, I slightly got carried away there because I was supposed to be talking about top three. But you know me. Now, listen, Tribe, here's the thing. Um... Uh, you know that you drive the show. Uh, and because I look for you, for you to drive the show, it means that if Mumsy, my mother, who we know is still alive, uh, so I need to ask permission from Tribe to respond to Mumsy. Because my mother is checking in on whether the girls got home safe. So without wishing to disclose too much personal information about my children, but my two girls last night went out on the razzle dazzle. And uh, so I'm just letting you know that top three stories are currently sitting there waiting to be told. They're probably quite important because they're things like Paris and Germany and Ring's End. But never mind, you're going to hear about my personal life instead. So my job last night, brilliantly, as the mother of two girls, was to get them help, get them ready, which is a job I love because I'm crap at all things girls. I don't really understand many girl things, but I sort of pretend just to kind of, you know, live a bit of their life, you know, just like a tick on a dog, just just sort of be around young people being excited to go out until like 2 a.m. and stand in the rain and in the cold and do terrible things with people they barely know. I mean, I don't know. I don't even want to think about it in regards to my own children, but I like being part of it. So I got the girls ready. I didn't really. They just let me. They just sort of pat me on the head and let me dry their hair and things. And then they went out and they got in because I was awake or I was woken by the dogs barking because they thought it was burglars, but it was my children. They got in at about 3 a.m. this morning. So not only did I see in New Year's fireworks, I was also awake for the return of my children. I usually sleep through in a coma. It's all good. I don't worry about them at all. Um, and now my mother, the mothership, is asking if they got home safe. So I'm kind of like, I need to message Mumsy, but equally I'm doing a show on radio. Do you know what I mean? 
So professional me would say, let's hold to the commercial break. But I feel like also tribe would understand if I just quickly message Mumsy back. Mumsy knows I do radio. Somehow it escapes her tiny mind every day. People laughing along. Great to wake up to Katie. Happy days. My New Year's resolution is to catch Katie in the morning. Ah, oh, so sweet. Katie, did you notice a lack of fireworks going off locally? <gasps> yes, that is very true. A lack of fireworks going off locally. Having said that, it was absolutely, when I dropped the girls off, it was whacking it down. So I was trying to entreat the girls with my excellent on the road trick, which is if I have to go out and I'm on the road um, and I could be doing something dastardly or I could be joining something I'm not supposed to be at or, or I could be being a protester or whatever I'm doing. I always pack in the bottom of my bag a black bin liner. I'm telling you now, travel tips for life, the black bin liner, if not, if not two. One, for just the reason you might need a black bin liner. And I always do. There is always a reason mutilated body parts. I don't know. I just threw that in. <laughs> Check you are still with me. But you can make excellent coats out of black bin bags. I cannot tell you the number of events, gigs, uh, naughtiness, um, things I shouldn't be at, places I shouldn't be that I've turned up. A black bin bag makes you innocuous. It makes you look like a homeless person. You can fit into dark shadows and and slight alleyways. You can crutch down and take a wee. No one sees a thing because the black bin liner touches the floor. And then when you're ready to just emerge like a butterfly, you can just rip the thing off like Superman emerging from some sort of cocoon. I'm just saying. What were we talking about? Oh, yes. So I need to text Mumsy and tell her the girls are safe. <laughs> I noticed that Mumsy was able to sleep till 8.30 before she worried about it. She's probably set father off to get her a cup of tea as well. So she's like, maybe I should just check as a grandma. Just check they are safe. I mean, if they're dead in a ditch, probably hear about it on the news. Shouldn't joke about these things. Um, shall we do some of the top three? Shall we? Let's have a try. Let's have a try. This is called the news. You know, it's supposed to be a news show. So let's give it a try. So my first story was really about Germany and France, where I was all eyes on because uh, because of their populations there and because of the uprising in Gaza and versus Israel. Whenever there's a kind of intifada over in the Middle East, things always kick off in France. No one likes to address it because no one wants to talk about the fact that the Muslim population in Western Europe is actually precisely like the population that's sitting in Hamas, <laughs> with Hamas, uh, celebrating Hamas uh, over in Palestine. We're not going there right now. But uh, the police in uh, France and Germany were not effing about last night. They were out in battalion level strength. Uh, even the minor indiscretion was immediately, you could tell the briefing they'd had, which is go hard, go early. So one person doing anything, they were annihilated, removed, obliterated, blasted from the face. So the briefing was shock, you know, shock and awe. Anyone does anything naughty involving a firework, shock and awe, stop all the rest of them. And there were warnings put out that if you fire a firework or you fire fireworks at police, you will be immediately arrested, immediately charged. Can be, I think they said, what did they say to? Uh, don't, this was from the Berlin police. Don't attack us. Don't shoot at us with fireworks and rockets. Avoid penalties or several years in jail. I mean, you'd think, what sort of world do we live in? where the police have to actively send out a tweet saying, don't shoot at us with fireworks or rockets. I mean, for God's sake. But I don't know how many of you will recall, as I do, I was sat on LBC radio when all of this was breaking on my Twitter and I was being threatened with, what was I being threatened with? Arrest by the Metropolitan Police for speculating. Do you remember Germany, uh, 2015? And authorities put out media in the early hours saying New Year's Eve had passed off peacefully. Do you remember? Just looking for the stats. Because I had a load of emails from women who knew what actually happened. and couldn't believe that Angela Merkel had said New Year's Eve passed off peacefully. 
because it was the year of the mass influx of our newly arrived uh, visitors who happened to stay. 1,200 women, that's an under understatement, an underestimate, uh, 1,200 women. This is 2015, so if you're just joining now, this is not 2023, 2024. This did not happen last night. This was 2015. 1,200 women sexually assaulted by around 2,000 men in German cities on New Year's Eve. Do you recall? It was like some bizarre free-for-all. All of these young women were out doing their normal thing, having a lovely time. And these recently arrived men clustered around them and it was organised, targeted and coordinated. And there was rape in every German town and village where young girls were gathered. And the authorities pushed out an immediate headline saying things passed off peacefully, which they later had to retract. So that's why New Year's Eve always has that kind of strange feeling for me, because it was a time of one of the greatest lies in a plethora of lies. And the other thing I want to get to before we go to commercial break, and I reassure Mumsy that the girls are safely sleeping upstairs, um, is Ring's End. Let me just check on Tribe. Tribe, Tribe, did you hear about Ring's End? Obviously, there's, I've got a slight giggle in there just because it's called Ring's End. And I know that's just childish, but Cologne, exactly, New Year's Eve, precisely. So Ring's End is obviously not funny in any way. Um, but the uh, police in Dublin, the guard, I, have started an investigation after a disused pub which was, get this, falsely rumoured, yeah, sure, to be earmarked for asylum seeker accommodation was gutted by fire. So you know how we've been talking about how the Irish keep burning down accommodations and hotels and buildings that are earmarked for illegals because they've had enough. And ever since the stabbing of the mother and child outside the primary school, the Irish have been like, we're done with this, right? So there was this pub, the Shipwright pub. Also, why can't pubs just be pubs? How many pubs are closing down? Breaks my heart. And I look at people who aren't in them and I'm like, get in the pubs and drink, otherwise you lose the pub. Anyway, uh, known as Sally's Bar on the south of the city in the early hours of Sunday. So I just want to play you this clip. I will talk probably over it. Have a little listen a minute to this. This is the pub. Sally's bar, and it was torched. I appreciate you want to hear it a great deal. This is the pub going up in flames. So uh, that sort of horizon and so that the line of the roofing of the houses goes on and on and then all of a sudden there's one that's bright orange and there's flames coming out the top and it's been completely gutted by fire so somebody allegedly through the back of the premises broke in and then burnt it down because they understood it was going to be used to house illegals but now the story has been mm, revised my personal opinion is that that's exactly what that pub was going to be used for. My personal view is that that was targeted for illegals. Illegals were going to be placed there. And it is now the case in Ireland that when there's a house available, Irish nationals don't get a look in. They're not allowed to apply because the money that will be given to house owners or landlords if they house illegals is far greater than they would get if they were to house ordinary Irish nationals. So my view would be that this pub was going to be for illegals, but that a switch has been done on the story behind it saying it was going to be to house emergency housing for homeless Irish people. And you will appreciate that's a very easy switch to make because you can just deny all knowledge you can say there was never any plans for it to be illegal. Look at this. The far right have burnt down housing that was going to be for the Irish homeless because they need to find a way to stop Irish people taking matters into their own hands. 
So my strong assertion is this was for illegals. This is just a switcheroo to try and uh, point fingers of blame, get social media to say, oh, look at the far right burning down housing that was intended for the Irish nationals. And the reason that I say this is not just to pluck something out my ass, but for example, I've spent a lot of time in Skegness working with the hotels uh, that were or have stood firm against the home office, buying them out, offering them incredible amounts of money to hand over their premises, more than they would make in a season without any of the hassle and a complete refurbishment on return. And every single time, targeted premises like, for example, the nursing home in Skegness will deny we are shutting, but we have no plans to take on illegals. We are shutting, but we are not selling out to the Home Office. They will deny, they will deny, they will deny, right up until the day when it's announced 120 illegals are coming in. And there's no forewarning. It's denial all the way. So it's very simple for the Irish government to switch this up and say it was to house Irish nationals. I don't believe it for one moment. Um, the bin liner must be a squaddy thing, Katie, as I do the same. Must be, mustn't it? <laughs> must be a squaddy thing. We're always prepared. We're always prepared for everything. Um, so, Dullies, what we have to do is we have to go to a short commercial break. Fear not, in the commercial break, I'm going to reassure Mumsy that she still has grandchildren, or she did when I heard them coming in at three. God knows what's happened subsequently. Um, and when we come back, what we've learned in 2023. And I want to just talk about a little bit two things that have happened that merge. One is how hard it is to leave the UK. And you know that this is a theme I've been pursuing throughout most of 2023. Joined with a list of places you won't be able to visit in 2024. So that's what I want to talk about when I come back. I also want more of your things you've learned or we learned in 2023. Uh, so do join Tribe and chat away about that. If you're new to TNT, if your New Year's resolution is to start listening to TNT Radio, uh, if you go to tntradio.live, you can join the conversation. So if you click on chat, uh, you can chat away, add your thoughts, add your conversation, help direct this show, because it, I am merely the conductor. And you, my darlings, are the orchestra. Just don't be the flutes. Never could stand a flute. Um, right, my darlings, go nowhere. Um, otherwise, I will, as you know, hunt you down and break your legs. My name is Katie Hopkins, and this is TNT Radio. The most banned woman on the planet, Katie Hopkins, on today's News Talk, TNT Radio. We are stronger together, you know. We are, and it's been a consistent message, in tw well, for me for, for many years, but stronger together, a consistent message delivered by me on stages all over the place in 2023 um, and, and small gatherings and speakeasies and wherever. And it will be a similar message in 2024. And the only, the change that I feel, you know, is very much it was a it was a sort of rallying cry before it was a come come towards me come, come here come into these rooms come gather come look 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 at all these other people you're not on your own so that's how I feel like it was last year that just like holding doors open going come on come on come on in come on in come in here it'll be really nice you'll really like it like you don't need to be anything other than someone who might be interested. Just come in, come in, right? I feel like that was 2023. 2024, I've got this sort of sense that it's now, yeah, come, keep coming in and good on you, you naughties. There's a sort of step up going on now where we're recovering from this idea of being separated and now we're on the naughty front and that the naughtiness seems to be spreading and this sense of compliance being something that you have to decide whether you will or won't comply and and nonsense and irrational rules making no sense therefore why would I do them and if I have to register this in order that I comply why would I register it at all and all of that going back and questioning things way back up the chain I love that because that's where it's never when it reaches you and it makes you go, well, that seems mad. It's about 18 steps before that, that you have to locate the madness and think, well, if I opt out of that whole thing, 
I don't end up down here answering this or filling in this form or paying someone 150 quid for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And I feel this way about Excel bullies, actually, because um, you'll know my views on Excel bullies, maybe, which is that it won't be it won't stop at Excel bullies. This will be dog licensing. It's a way of printing money and it's a way of starting to get rid of people owning dogs for net zero. It's coming. It's coming. I know. I know. I sound like a mad woman. I know. But I'm OK with sounding like a mad woman because that's been true for 20 years. So what have we learned in 2023, good people? I am. Um, I'm wanting your thoughts and input on what you learned in 2023. And that can be a personal thing or it can be something that you feel like you picked up throughout the year. Um, one of my things is you can fool people twice, right? That was one of our learnings, wasn't it? I think it needs to be the year of, well, I can't really, can I say that? If I'm reading from Tribe, does that absolve me of the sin of swearing? <laughs> 2024 needs to be the year of fuck it. Yeah, I totally agree. See, I just read that, so it's not really my fault. I got my silly cow tickets for Saturday in Blackpool in June. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you imagine being back on the road next, oh no, not next year, this year, but in the spring and summer? Hmm. So it was Barry Baltic this year, but last year, oh my God, now I forgot what year I'm in, but this year it's going to be a spring and summer tour which gets, means I get to wear very little inappropriately. A pretty sad start to the new year for the people of Japan. Oh, God, 7.5 earthquake, and now the tsunami is rolling in. Mm. Is that an omen for their year? I hope not. So, yeah, my learnings, 2023, you can fool people twice. That was one of the hard things for us, wasn't it? Is that we looked around and the same people who were morons last time were being morons this time. They were itching for it. Number of people posting their positive COVID test on social media, like it was a badge, like of honour. And you know why? Because they were thirsty for the attention it used to get them. Thirsty people. If you're listening in just audio, I'm sure this was very exciting for you, but thirsty people wanting, craving sympathy or attention or the feeling of being special. I'm immunocompromised. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. You're immunocompromised, but you're not fast food compromised, are you, you chumba wamba? It's always the chunkers, wasn't it? Immunocompromised. Right. I want to just talk to you briefly about this. Ooh, it's trending on Twitter. What is? Oh, Japan, earthquake, tsunami. Can I just say, shouldn't be disrespectful to the Japanese people, but I do love the word tsunami. Anytime there's a T and an S. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, so transport, can I, you know how I bang on about how difficult they make it for us to fly anywhere? Like if you've tried to go to a regional airport, how hard is it to fly out of a regional airport? Seriously, how how expensive is it? How difficult and expensive is it to park your car or to try and take luggage or to try and check in with an actual human being, or not to have to wait in a line for at least eight years and nearly miss your flight and have to sweat from the, you know, your under boob in, in distress and panic before scratching another passenger's eyeballs out to try and get a seat. You know what I mean? That weird pressure that's been put on everyone. That's ridiculous. We see it on trains, which are either on strike or not. I was just reading about uh, British trains. Uh, train drivers who get a basic salary of 65, which they can bump up to 90k and more. Um, where did I, where did I read? This is from the Specky, which is sort of brilliant. Unbelievably, the railways, the railways, the railways. I don't know what a railway is, but I definitely want to go on it. The railways still operate on a system which relies utterly on staff volunteering to work particular services, especially at the weekend, rather than simply being rostered to work certain hours. So despite having high rates of pay, where medium full-time earnings in the rail industry are 47 grand, 
which is a third as high again as median earnings in the UK. So despite earning up to 50k just working on the railways and therefore that being a third higher than the median earnings in the rest of the UK, they still get to decide voluntarily when they would like to work, which means that certain hours don't get covered, which is why the trains aren't running for those reasons, because they have staff shortages. So you had the Eurostar go down. You know how hard it is to get flights anywhere. Our train system relies on volunteering, despite having some of the highest salaries in the UK. And at the same time, we're supposed to be what? giving up private cars. We're being taught that you shouldn't have a private car. We're having new builds. You can only buy the new build if you promise not to, or you ref you absolutely sign contractually to say you will not own a car. And this very excellent article in the Specky, if there's one big lesson to be learned from the almost constant chaos, is that we should never make ourselves over-reliant on one form of transport, especially if there are unions involved. It's a reminder of why we still need private cars and why the dream of cities where everyone uses public transport nearly all the time is just pie in the sky. Even if we don't use them all the time, we need cars as a defence against union militancy and technological failure, and preferably cars which carry significant quantities of their own fuel, rather than electric cars which have to be charged off the grid. Exactly. So brilliantly put. I love it. I love a basic car. I love my Panda. Um, just looking here on Tribe, so do join the conversation. And if you cannot stand this show or me, um, do stay on TNT or come back to it the top of the hour, or perhaps not the top of the hour, perhaps the top of the following hour. You can even go to TNT, um, to the website, and you could choose which presenter you think might be someone that would titivate your senses. Uh, if you didn't like this show, I'm just saying, there's lots of opportunities and options. I don't like to be a doomster, but one way to stop people flying is out of fear. So if there's a false flag where a plane or planes drop out of the sky, alien invasion, terror attack. People will be afraid to fly and all flights grounded pending investigations. They just want to travel to stop. Right. Which brings me so neatly as if I planned this show, which I totally did. CNN had this article. So I was thinking about this whole concept of, you know, how I always bang on about things being made smaller, harder to get away, harder to travel. Heart put you off, put you off, or we'll never take the Eurostar again because you never know. We won't fly again because it was so stressful. We won't go there again. We won't book a train again because you never know. We won't, we won't, we won't. CNN article, the places you won't be able to visit in 2024, right? And I thought to myself, oh my God, this is going to be places shutting down. But it sort of follows that thread. Venice, you can't visit now in groups of 25 or more, and you can't use a loudspeaker. Get ready for more regs. This is actually a list of places that are shut free, the refurb or Noma shutting, uh, the Pergamon Museum in Berlin um, is shutting for, let me find out, upgrade. So it's actually upgrades, but I thought, oh, here we go. The list of places you simply won't be allowed to visit. One of them actually, fair play is the Elephant Trunk Rock in Taiwan. It did, in fact, resemble an elephant's trunk. Yeah, no S, Sherlock. Of course it did. Otherwise, they wouldn't have called it the Elephant's Trunk Rock, would they? They'd have called it the Penguin's Arse. Christ. Anyway, it's actually fallen into the sea, which seems to be a legitimate reason why you can't go and see, see it anymore. I'm just saying the smalling. We've talked about it before. Let's play um, this beautiful thing that I've got for you to set you up for 2024. Take a listen to this. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good nor look too wise. 
If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life for broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at the beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are done and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can feel... Ooh. Forgiving <laughs> that poem is so emotional to me. I really, I feel it with every inch of my fiber and every inch of my soul. But uh, it's definitely one for you guys. I think any time you're wondering about 2024 or yourself or your place in it, I think listening to uh, Kipling and If, then you will feel better. That whole watch the things you gave your life for broken and stoop and build it up with broken tools. That idea of holding on, rebuilding and not complaining. It's what we're doing right now, good people. Um, so I'll be back same time tomorrow. Stay with TNT Radio. My name is Katie Hopkins and this is TNT. Happy New Year. To hear a replay of this hour, go to episodes at tntradio.live.